Good morning. I'm Charlotte and I work for Quality Sewing Back. I'm one of their Sew Fund educators and we're in the Puget Sound area. And today I'm going to show you how I do my embroidered towels and put a cuff on it. You guys asked for this for a long time, so here it goes. The first thing I'm going to do when purchasing my towels is I'm going to take it home and wash it. Am I particular about how I wash it and what temperature? No, because I don't know. I usually give these away, so I don't know how the customer that I give it to or the friend that I give it to how they're going to wash it. So I just throw it in the wash, make sure I can throw a color catcher in, make sure it doesn't run too much. And then they come out of the dryer really, really wrinkled. So what you want to do before you use any best press is you want to just use water and iron it really, really well. And then after it's nice and, and pretty, pretty smooth, is then when you can uh, start using your best press. When you put any best press on, you want to press it. You want to put it on the back first, let it soak in really well. And the reason for that, if you think about what best press does and the heat rises, so we want to bring this, the best press up to the front side of our fabric and it's going to give you a nice smooth finish like this. Once I think it's, it's ironed enough with the best press, I am going to on the back, Put Floriani Stitch and Wash Fusible. This is a tearaway fusible um, product. And it needs to be wide enough for, to be all included in your hoop. So if your hoop is this size, the, the stabilizer has to go on both sides of that and up on the bottom. And this is a two part stabilizer. So this part tears away. And then once I get this torn away, and I will take more time at home. I can take all of this big pieces of, of stabilizer off of here now. What stabilizer is behind all of these stitches, it stays with the towel as long as the towel is alive. Once I have that all embroidered, but first of all, when I do embroider it, I'm going to, I'm going to not cut the bottom off. I always cut the bottom of my towel off and that's because it has these big, wide, uh, clunky hems in it. We don't want that. What I've done here is I've marked my sides and my top with our magic chalk, chalk liner here that's going to make a nice fine fine line and it can be ironed off. Got that good. Okay. So this happens to be one of our teacup designs that we did in so fun this last month. So now I'm going to, now I've embroidered my towel. Now I want to cut this off and I've cut off about three inches. So let's cut this off real quickly over here. I don't know what's that. And I'm just going to do this. Okay, so I'll get this all nice and cut off. Then I want to do a cuff on here and make it real fancy. So now I have this nice clean edge right here. This is going to be my cuff. My cuff was cut nine and a half inches, and this fabric's in our stores. And what I'm going to do here is I want to make a half an inch hemline on both sides of this. So I'm going to take my hot hammer here, my hot ruler, and fold this over to the half inch mark. Don't do that. You're on your cutting mat. Don't do oh. that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the hem. I am going to do a half inch hem in this and I'm using my hot hammer here and we have these in the store also and so I want this pressed nice and nice and firm across there. Move this down and do this again. Okay there we go. Now before I decide to put it to sew the sides, I am going to put a piece of steam -a seam along here, along the hemline. Okay, so <clears throat> this is how I fuse. If you have ha half inch steam allow, I mean steam -a seam, you can use this. I happen to use quarter inch along here, and don't over iron steam -a seam. It can be over ironed, and before you pull off the paper, it must be cold. So don't pull it off while it's still hot when you've just done it. So I'm going to wait to pull that side off. And what I want to do is put right sides together. And I'm going to take my towel. And let me move this. 
and I'm going to lay it across here. And what I want to do is I want to make a measurement. And I forgot it. A pencil here. Let's get a pen and do this. I'm going to do this with a Sharpie today. You're not going to do that at home because this is a demo and I want you guys to see it. I want at least a half an inch seam allowance here. So I can mark this side a half an inch in just by putting this up here. And then I want to mark the other side. So here I got a nice mark. Now what I want to do also is I want to make a line all the way down here. And the reason that I want to do that is because I want my, looks like I did it a little crooked there. I want it to be a straight line right down there. So when I sew it, my bottom of my towel is even. So this is one side of my towel here. Okay, what I want to do is I want to pin this side because I'm usually on my cutting table and I have a lot more space and I can lay this towel perfectly down straight so that I can just make this cuff or the towel fit completely inside this cuff. So I've already got my half inch seam allowance here and I want to mark this side of my towel over here right on the edge of where the towel is. That's where I want my seam line. So let's make another I want these really really even right here and I'm gonna put this here mark it and I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I am going to sew this both ends with a straight stitch what I normally do when I start anything from the corner I don't want to push my fabric forward so I am going to start about a half an inch in put my presser foot down Put my needle where I think it's going to be on that line and then go ahead and back go hit reverse. It always works. Go back. Whoops. I guess I hold it. Okay. Now come forward. What you've done is you've you've eliminated that part of that seam from being pushed. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little back stitch on this right here. Whoops, I gotta hold it down. Okay. Cut it off. Now, when I cut this off, I want to leave another half inch here. Always on home deck stuff, you always leave a half an inch uh, seam allowance. You know, you quilt with a quarter of an inch, and you you do. Uh, let's do it right here. Okay, I'll turn this around. So when I get this done, I want to take my paper off of my steam -a seam before I turn it right side out. So let's do it from the other end, see if we can come off. Oh, I need to do this end. It, it works better when you sew both ends. Okay, there we go. Well, let's do, do this again. And remember, I'm gonna start about a half an inch in. Put my, I like to put my needle down. So I'm on the line. Oh, there we go. Okay. Reverse. Okay. Let's go forward. Okay. So I'm going to cut this these two ends off here. Make a real nice corner on this. And I'm going to do it again on this side. Oh, whoops. You're going to do these with better, better scissors. Okay. So turn it right side out. Give it a real nice press. Get your corners, you know, exactly where you want them and nice and tidy. Okay. So when I put this on my towel, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this seam allowance is in the back of my towel. So when I set my towel in here, it's going to go right there. You can use a little basting glue if you want to, if you feel it's necessary. You know, use any tool that you feel is necessary to get the job done that you need to do. I put it on both sides, get a little bit here, so that when I stick this in here, if I hit this with an iron right here, a half inch in, because I have. I usually make a, a half inch line right across there. Now I want to 
press this and what that does it sets the glue so now I can move it to the other side my my cuff and come over here and do the same thing put a little basting glue on it right here put put it right in there real nice and tight and then pull this across let me push this down get this needs to go in just there we go right to that hem line to that and if you want to make a line across your towel with a chalk line do it if you, if you sew better with that or you feel like you could get the towel where it needs to be now if if i've done this correctly if i put that towel the, the back side of the towel along the back of my uh, back back of my uh inside of my cuff i can press it in there and it's because i have that steam seam in there it's going to stay put when i go ahead and i put this one on the top here press it okay let's do this side let's get this stuck just a little bit okay I will turn this over and press it on the other side because remember I have steam seam also on the opposite side. Now when this is washed, this towel, you see this white stabilizer that's still on there? That is the part that washes away. So when it is washed, all that white will go away from the back of this. Now you can go ahead and you could do a straight stitch along here. I want to put rickrack on here. And I'm going to use a triple stitch. <laughs> My rip rack's on the floor. This is just like sewing at home. Everything lands on the floor. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to really clean up this end of my rip rack. Now you could put ribbon here, but you guys always want to know how I do my rip rack. So that's why we're doing that today. And I'm going to fold it back. And I'm going to go to my machine. You could also use your glue here if you would like to. You could use a pin. I don't, I use very few pins, as few, few as I could get away with, I should say. Okay, we're going to do a triple zigzag. Is that it? That's it. Okay. So I don't really set up my machine really um, special for a zigzag, I mean a triple zigzag. The reason I want to do a triple zigzag is because it goes three stitches over, three stitches back, and it buries itself into the rickrack. If I use a single zigzag, you can see the thread. So that's, or if you use a single one going right straight down the center of your rickrack, your rickrack is going to curl. So this is what I've done, and it works out really well. I want to put my needle down. I want to go back a little, take my pin out, and this is such a simple thing to do. I put my rickrack right along the edge of my cuff. Let's see if I can get this color. Uh, I don't know. That's good. Okay, let's start here. I need to lengthen this just a tad. Let's do that. Okay, let's start again. Now, if you get a favorite stitch and you know exactly what it is, most of our machines have memories in them. You can just put put it in your memory, and then when you want to do this stitch, it's always there. You don't have to put it out on paper. This is as simple as it is. And I did this with hand thread so you guys can see the stitch. And we're going to show you that really close in just a minute when I get finished with this. I had to look over and make sure I had this on the right side. I've never done it on the wrong side, but I sure could happen. Okay, we're almost done here. I'm going to cut this down here. And
I'm not going to turn this back here so we can, I can show you how that stitches and how nice it looks. And your towel is finished. You can make this cup any size you want. We'll come back and take care of that later. Okay. So this is the stitch that I put across that. You could make it wider, you could make it longer, whatever you want. Now that is for you. You could put a decorative stitch in there also, but you can see how that really holds down the rickrack. And so then you fold it like this. And voila. these make great gifts for hostess gifts, for, you know, you know somebody's color in their kitchen, somebody that loves coffee like this one happens to be. Look at what a cute, what a cute towel that ends up to be. And we have a few more over here that we can show you. Reva will be happy too. So those are those are some of the fun things that you could do with this application. That's great. Like I say, it makes great gifts. Thank you, Reva. Such a good job. So you guys, there you go. I finally did it for you guys and I know you'll be happy because I see some of you filming me sometimes so now you have me actually in your sewing room and thank you for coming today and we'll see you later bye